Good morning. Let us all please stand and let's take this moment as we turn to one another and welcome each other to our celebration of the Holy Mass. And this morning, as we celebrate Thursday in the 29th week of Ordinary Time. And the opening hymn for today's celebration is number 596, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You come to set the world on fire. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You baptize us with your spirit. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. You free us from our sins. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your nature. For just as you presented the parts of your bodies as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness for lawlessness, so now present them as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you are free from righteousness. But what profit did you get then from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit that you have leads to sanctification, and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. To God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, 
nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. <clears throat> Blessed are they who hope in the, in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed, Blessed are, are they, they who, who hope, hope in the, in the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim this gospel of the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I consider all things so much rubbish, but I may gain Christ and, he, and be bound in him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, and a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, and a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's gospel, we have an apparent contradiction. On the one hand, we know Jesus as the Prince of Peace, as we often hear during Advent and Christmas from Isaiah 9-6. We also hear that Jesus, when he appears to his disciples after the resurrection, says, peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. So on the one hand, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, he gives peace. And on the other hand, we hear in today's gospel, do you think that I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. And then he shares how a household will be divided against itself. How do we make sense of this apparent contradiction, peace and division? Well, for those who trust in Jesus and who believe in him, Jesus offers us his peace. If you've ever had a very profound encounter with Christ, uh, I know you've experienced this. I've experienced it myself. There's a deep peace that descends upon us, a peace that surpasses all understanding. And it's a peace which is a glimpse, a hint of the fullness of peace of heaven, and then it disappears. And every once in a while, God gives that deep peace to us again. For those who trust in Jesus, he offers us that peace, a foreshadowing of heaven. But for those who don't believe, and for those who don't trust in Jesus, they've closed themselves off already to that peace. They can't receive the peace that Jesus offers. Furthermore, within the family, 
among those who believe and those who don't believe, there's division. There's not peace. What I see often in my ministry is the parent believes or the grandparents believe, but the young ones don't, especially as they go to high school and as to college. Their parents believe, grandparents, they pray so much that their children, grandchildren would believe, but they don't. And there's division in this household. Or another situation I see commonly is the husband is a believer or the wife is a believer, but the other isn't. Most often, it's the woman who is the believer and then the husband who is not. I see that very often. And just as Jesus predicted, because of him, there won't be peace in the household but division. The household will be divided against each other. So today we pray that the kingdom of God will come so that there will no longer exist this division within families, within hearts, within believers and non-believers, but that one day we can all believe every single person and experience the peace that only God can give to us. We place our trust in God, and we now present our prayers to Him. Our response, make our lives worthy of You, O Lord. Make our lives worthy of You, O Lord. That the leaders of the church who are openly persecuted may be given the courage and strength to remain constant in their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Make our lives worthy of You, O Lord that parents may have the strength and courage to guide their children in the ways of faith and Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. Make our lives worthy of you, O Lord. The families and communities divided by religious differences may discover the truth and show respect to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Make our lives worthy of you, O Lord that the sick, the elderly, and the disabled may receive love and attention from their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Make our lives worthy of you, O Lord. That those who have died may be happy forever in the kingdom of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Make our lives worthy of you, O Lord. The intention of this Mass is offered for the SDC clergy. We also pray in thanksgiving for Anna Mohamed, the health of Tom Gallagher and Janet Saito, and the eternal repose of Virginia Nowinski, Philip Raimundo, John Bomfog, and Jingjing Lorena Pasqual. And now in a moment of silence, we offer to the Lord our own prayers and our own petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Make, Make our, our lives worthy, worthy of you, O Lord. Lord. God, our Father, we ask that you open all of our hearts, especially the hearts of all those who do not believe in you, so that one day we may all experience the peace, the fullness of peace, which only you can give. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by your Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin, by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uncelli et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm. 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Santiago de Compostela, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, misered en hobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, misered en hobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Be
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the communion antiphon. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. The body of Christ. We now pray in union with our brothers and sisters online, with those who are homebound, and those who cannot receive our Lord sacramentally today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. We turn now to Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. To Saint Joseph, Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. And to Saint Michael. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 381, Take the Word of God with You. Take the word of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's word and make them grow. Go in peace to serve the world, in peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God, with you as you go. Take the peace of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's peace and make them grow. Go in peace to serve the world, in peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God, with you as you go.